everyone fascinating chat today as we talk about why the software supply chain is such a big security risk right now with a true expert and innovator in the field nick how are you i'm doing well evan how are you good thanks so much for joining really hot topic um maybe introduce yourself and the journey uh, to Lineage and tell us about the big idea behind the company. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, you know, my background as I spent uh, several years within uh, large organizations managing cybersecurity, specifically AppSec, vulnerability management, cloud security, um, and was running into this issue around so software supply chain. You know, Solar Solar Winds was the first one, and then mm -hmm. came around Log4j. And I was really starting to bang my head against the wall, saying, "What's going on here?" And really wanted to dive in and understand uh, what is the cause of these issues in the software supply chain, especially after Log4j. Um, you know, and Log4j had automated the CI/CD pipeline, DAS, SAS, you name it. And, and it didn't save me, right? It couldn't help me at all uh, with Log4j. And so that's really where uh, I really dove into this area and trying to understand uh, what was happening. Um, long story short, I met with the CEO and founder of Lineage who I'd worked with previously in a prior life. And he had this concept and I said, wow, this is great. I've been banging my head for the last six months trying to figure this out and spent time with him and, and the team um, nights and weekends and finally joined after I, you know, uh, I, I was convinced that we have a, a solution here to address this incredibly difficult challenge. Why is it so difficult? What are some of the challenges? Why is it so hard to fix, particularly with, you know, open source software? I think the industry is getting better, but not good enough, clearly. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, some of the, well, first of all, open source is pervasive, right? Everybody knows mm -hmm. it. And, and open source is here to stay. It's driving innovation and uh, it's doing a lot of good things uh, for the industry. Um, the challenge with open source is the fact that open source, uh, people who develop open source uh, are in it to, to drive innovation. They're not necessarily in it to maintain that software, <laughs> right, um, over time. So the one aspect is the maintenance of open source tends to lag. So, you know, vulnerabilities and other risks don't get addressed very rapidly or sometimes not at all, right? Because there's not an active community, even though that's being used. The, the second issue though, which I think is equally important is that it's fairly opaque. So just like developers and organizations use open source as opposed to recreating the wheel, open source developers use other open source and those open mm -hmm. source use other open source. And we see this nested set of, we call it dependencies in open source that can go down 60 layers deep. And the challenge with that of not knowing what's actually in the software you're bringing in um, is that there are risks, uh, vulnerabilities, but other risks deep inside that supply chain, as well as, you know, we know uh, there are bad actors that understand the opaqueness and take advantage of that to either insert back doors or put in uh, compromised components without you knowing uh, that they're there. Fantastic. And how does your software work? I mean, what's the secret sauce, the magic behind it? And what does it mean to um, for real world developers and, and product companies? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, our, pri our primary focus is on uh, not only detecting and finding the risks in open source that you are using in your software, but also uh, remediating them and remediating them mm -hmm. efficiently. So the way the way we operate is first on the find. We have crawlers, so similar to how Google crawls the web and indexes the web, we crawl open source. So mm -hmm. let's say we find that in your software, let's say we scan your source code or, or your container, and we find uh, you're using open source package A. We will scan open source package A in GitHub or wherever it is, and we'll scan the source code. We also scan the binary or the deployed artifact that it produces. Oh, wow. And so what we do is we do a comparison and then we do a partial uh, build. We actually do the build, run the build script. Um, so the reason we do all of that is we're also, we're capturing risk at multiple dimensions. You know, what's in the source code? Who's contributing? What's the contributor behavior? Is the build, does the build match 
what should come out from running that source code build. And, and we start finding discrepancies and we start finding what we call tamper risk or risk of tamper. And that's how we like the XE util attack is a classic example where somebody modified the build script, nobody knew about it, and then made a change in what was the build artifact, but you wouldn't have find you would not find it in looking at uh, source. And, and then we do this for every dependency. By running the build, we actually find 100% of the dependencies for each package. And then we crawl all the dependencies down to the nth level. The name of the company's lineage, we discover the entire lineage, if you will, of your software and identify these risks. And once we identify the risk, it's really looking at um, remediation. And so from a remediation standpoint, one of the things we, we've started doing is how, how do companies and large software development shops start secure, right? So the big issue is you're bringing in vulnerable or risky open source. So we launched gold open source and gold open source is vetted, safe open source. It's free of critical and high vulnerabilities. It also passes our integrity check. So we make sure there isn't a, a tamper or a risk of a tamper or a compromise in the supply chain as well. So, it, so now you can start secure by using gold open source, secure packages, secure images um, that are validated and verified. And we give you full details, you know, SBOM, provenance, everything you would need to know in order to get the confidence that it is a secure open source. And the second thing is automating the source code, the remediation in source code. So we have AI that will uh, basically rebuild from source uh, your vulnerable open source components with what we call gold open source or, or secure open source. And the third piece is containers. So we know in containers, we're bringing in a lot a lot of other open source vulnerabilities. We will uh, actually create a duplicate of your container, fix it, and then give it back to you. So all of this happens within your CI CD pipeline. None of your software or containers actually leave your environment. And then fourth, we're doing continuous monitoring. So uh, let's say a new log 4J comes out, a new zero day, we will be able to detect it. We have a software bill of materials for all of your deployed applications, can identify the exposure and go back to number one, right? See if we have a gold open source version. If not, we can also create a, a clean version. So we will fork branch open source, fix it and contribute it back if necessary. Sounds amazing. You're also introducing something called Agentic AI for self-healing code. Now that sounds intriguing. How does that work? So the Agentic AI, basically, let's say for fixing uh, source code, one of the challenges and, and why organizations you know, are not patching or, or moving to more secure open source components is that it's deeply uh, interconnected with existing software, right? The blast radius or the dependencies or compatibility changes are, are causing breakages in their applications. And so what we do with the Agentic AI is it actually figures out what are all of the changes to remediate the greatest number of vulnerabilities without breaking your software. So we do a full analysis, dependency tree analysis. And that way the Agentic AI can make updates knowing it's not gonna break your software and removes that burden from, from the developer and, and does it you know, extremely fast. We're, we're talking in minutes, right? We're doing these remediation mm. patches. And then since we're integrated, the, the Agentic AI is integrated into the uh, your CI CD pipeline, you run your same battery of tests. So it doesn't doesn't go outside of your normal development cycle. It simply automates the uh, the process of, of fixing or remediating those, those risks. Wow, amazing. So let's talk about the people side of the equation. Um, we all know that DevSecOps teams are sort of overwhelmed. You can't really hire this talent easily to say the least. Yeah. So what, what does it mean for the people side of the organization and giving folks, you know, more job satisfaction or visibility yeah. control over their work, which is yeah. kind of stressful. No, that, you know, that's huge. And what we're finding is we're taking this approach, leveraging the agentic AI to help offload, you know, what, what is, you know, not a, not a fun job, right? Having to figure out what are the vulnerabilities and then debating whether the vulnerability should be patched. Is it going to, you know, break my software? Is there an alternative version? So now, you know, removing a lot of what is painful from a DevSecOps and focusing on, you know, driving uh, changes efficiently uh, without asking humans to do this kind of, this grunt work, if you will. The other thing we're finding at working with our customers 
this approach actually unifies the dev teams a lot closer to the security teams because now it's not simply yeah we found these vulnerabilities go fix it it's let's okay we we found these vulnerabilities we'll leverage agentic ai to remediate so you know dev teams you don't have to and then we're still testing so we know you know it's not going to break your software and, and the net effect is these teams are actually working closer together because they are aligned on both which is you know making software more secure but at the same time doing it uh, much more efficiently fantastic and so what one thing a CISO could do today or immediately to kind of reduce their software supply chain risk any suggested first steps yeah, absolutely. I think the basic first step is making sure you have a software bill of materials or an S bomb, yeah. right? Of all of your software, knowing exactly what's in there, and then understanding the risk of all of those components it is number one. You know, I think in cybersecurity, not having an inventory, if you will, understanding everything you have is is always step one, and and it's it's incredibly important to understand all of the components in your software then to be able to manage risk. Fantastic advice. So I, I guess the question is, are we moving fast enough? I hope your sales are are booming and, you know, customers adopting, but is that enough to avoid, you know, some pretty big disasters that are potentially on the horizon? Um, so so we are doing very well. We're, uh, the adoption is, has been, been terrific. However, as you know, you know, the, the landscape's always changing, it's always shifting. Um, this one of the things that we've discovered, as well as there's been some reporting around it, is with AI, uh, you know, the the old what I would call the old world, which is not quite yet the old world of of prioritizing vulnerabilities based on exploitability and other dimensions is quickly becoming outdated, mainly because uh, the threat actors can now use AI to get any vulnerability, whether it has an exploit or not, can create an exploit almost overnight, right? And they can create these exploits with very little skill is the other issue, right? So AI mm. poses that skill gap. So now, you know, do you spend time uh, figuring out how to prioritize so that you can remediate some things now and remediate other things later? I think that luxury goes away, right? I, I think now you shift it to how do I remediate uh, the maximum number of, you know, vulnerabilities as quickly as possible. And uh, the main reason for that is, like I said, you know, the we know the vulnerabilities are out there. We know the threat actors are using AI to write exploits for those. Um, so we need to shift the model. And this is where we believe AI and the use of agentic AI really helps because now, you know, the, the big, uh, I guess, threshold was always the impact on your development teams. Offload that to agentic AI to do the automated uh, patching uh, you know, really frees up now your resources to focus on on building new features while driving vulnerabilities out of your software. Brilliant. Um, you make it sound so simple. <laughs> if only it were the case. But what's next with Lineage? Uh, where do you see uh, yourself going? The biggest opportunity to help customers over the next couple of years? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what we're really focused on, as I mentioned, is making sure that we don't not only find risk, but remediate risk mm -hmm. and do it in a way that is efficient and effective for, for our customers. Um, and so where we see, what we're focused on is continuing to develop AI and agentic AI uh, with regard to remediation, uh, the gold open source, and also focusing on uh, how do we help customers that everybody's building code now with, uh, with AI, right? So we have code generation tools out there understanding how to manage the risks, one, identifying the risks and managing the risk with uh, code generated by AI. And so that's a that's been a big, strong focus of ours. We're involved in many of the uh, in industry working groups around AI and AI bill of materials is also something we see on the horizon as an important component uh, to understanding risks of AI. Um, so so really, you know, that's that's we're going to probably not probably we'll see some some new capabilities uh, later this year focused on addressing uh, code generated AI. Fantastic! And where can folks meet you or the team? I, I see you're at Black Hat. That's uh, true. Maybe even with your own events, you have DefCon coming up. Where where are you out and about over the next yeah, few months? Absolutely, we'll we'll be at Black Hat, and on August on Monday, August fourth, we're hosting. Uh, what we call the Lineage Software Supply Chain Summit, 
Uh, we have you know speakers from industry, from government, uh, subject matter experts. The goal here is to really uh, share a lot of the thought leadership regarding uh, software supply chain security. And no surprise, the theme for, for this year's event is AI for security and securing AI, right? So it's really uh, looking at it from both sides uh, in terms of what's the opportunity with AI and then you know what are the risks with using AI and how do we secure them? Brilliant, well congratulations on all the success and helping customers on such an important domain, onwards and upwards. Thank you very much, Evan. Thank you, and thanks everyone for listening and watching and check out our new TV show, techimpact.tv, now on Bloomberg and Fox Business. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.